Hey guys, welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last episode, we found the murderer, but we also found a good boy standing over here. You can kind of see him. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's right here. And we're going to try to interact with him. I'm so excited. Okay. Let me put my gun away. What if that scares him? Since going carefully it might be dangerous. What if I put my gun back in my hand? I don't want to scare it. Okay, anyways, if you do enjoy this episode, remember to like and subscribe. And let's go. The creature stands on long, stilt like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's I'm in love. hair. I love him. White and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. That shit's crazy, dog. Reed like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. Oh my god, we're just gonna do this. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hands, The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Raise your other hand, As too. You do, I love it. It won't hurt me. Comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white like stalks of porcelain knitting above you, praying to you. We should be praying to it. Don't pray to me, I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tippy toes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. It's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one. Take a picture, Kim. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade Look of a sword. It. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. I got it.
I'm gonna touch its whiskers. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the chitin curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Look at your wings. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Carefully put it scythe like The limb before you is incredibly light. Is shy like my eggshell. <laughs> it's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning! I'm gonna do it a anyway. small shadow passes the creature's arm. It High above me. you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The stimulus overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. I'm gonna look my it tastes up. like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointing from limb and head alike, odorless, mostly comprised of water. We got it. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Tell me what I... Tell me, what are you doing? I exist. <gasps> what? I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Fire burning. Fire? Where? Inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me. What is happening? There is not even blood, but link. Like sap from a one palm. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness. Being intruded upon. Transient. Deep. Moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I love him. I am at the end of an era funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never burn. You're the type of man I'd like to be. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Why are you asking? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time, something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. That's horrible. Yes. The leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. I don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully, someone ate it. Someone ate it? The next time I molded, I grew an antenna again. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? I was born to detect you. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I did it. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. This is my masterpiece. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. Um, 
Is this a dream? What is happening? No, you're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from, all this around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lilies. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent us by a god. It's sent to us by a god. I think we should eat it. Oh! If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. What? <laughs> so? So you look like reeds and you eat reeds? Yes, they don't mind. Have you ever eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself oh. and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, combing myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics flight, please. that help it maintain its camouflage. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussurin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a starter display, so I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry, it is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. Oh. Are you a miracle? No. You are the miracle. How? The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form. Well, you are extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. The pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Or how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if he misplays us all one day? Or just forget? I always thought this way. No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. I don't, this is the I've already forgotten the whole world once when I drink too much. So it is already happening. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. No. The mo- The pale too. It is an- Your avoid- Which is- Instead of air, you ex- Everything your eyes touch goes back there. 
behind the nerve, Mira. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if he misplays us all one day? We'll just forget. I will be extra careful not to blink, stick and stack. Don't worry. Please be. Or oh, one day, one of you will close your eyes and sign. And open them to see that none of this ever existed. Can Mario have a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. And I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? No. The case is totally meaningless compared to this. I've transcended the case. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. I have to go... I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. Uh... No. There is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you're the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For all mankind. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you. He smells of fires, so awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence, and it. I will. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meters thick insect to tell you that. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. That was my best friend. And just like that, it's gone. That was my best Skating friend. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water and something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Oh, the helmet and a T932 rifle. Yes. That was something, guys. That was that was that was the best day of my life. That was the best day of my life. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. How could you not see the plasmid? Mister Doras, the man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem. Doesn't it, Mr. Doras? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened Old to this age man? and shock. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. 
But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. It's definitely toxic, the Phasmin. It told me. Told you? Yes, good. During your long staring match, I understand. I, he can see Kim, it's just read for that him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmin has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Forgets it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dras, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the... the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it is of it in it? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect, maybe. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. We found some things in the Phasmid nest, Mr. Drug. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything. I like how it knows I have the helmet on my head. Perhaps you should. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the mm. would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Drus could have picked it up. Or the Phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid? This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. I'm gonna let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Return. Okay, let's go quickly. Is this the right way? Or is it over here? It's over here. This is not it. Wait, can I go in there? Oh, that's the tower! Okay, I get it. I get it. Island is on the map now. I just thought of that. It is not, but it is right there. So we're here, and he took the shot between these buildings. So he took a shot between. No, we're. He we went out he here, so we're. Yeah, I guess that's where we are, and he took the shot between into that window. I don't know how guns work. How shooting works. I'm gonna say it's legit. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman 
stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Look what the tide brought him. You! What does that say on your back? Fuck the world? <laughs> so you turn into some kind of nihilistic rock and roll world ender? Yes. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just That's seen. That's true. I don't even know who that is. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. But where are his sunglasses? You're the man with the sunglasses. That's right. And you look like you got 20 STDs. <sighs> yeah, fuck the world. No one else seems to bothered by that. Harry, that's because you're a cop with fuck the world written on his back. Yes, I'm a good goddamn Actually, cop. Are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on, it's hard to tell. Vic, calm down. Who are you? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstrom. I believe we've met on several occasions. Yes. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicomar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. So this guy the, the rando dude who's like, I'm on vacation with my kid just a day off. Tell me about shit. Is a policeman? Don't fucking lie to me. I like how he said I just have a day I'm just having a day off and he's been here for four fucking days. What the fuck? Where's this little kid? Whose kid you kidnapped for this? Special consultant Trant Heidelstam, Patrol Officer Jidit Mino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter. So I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. Thanks, Lieutenant. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What's this all about? Harry, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. Oh. <laughs> You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. So Trent has... Yes, I'm Tran Heilerstam. I never said I wasn't Tran Heilerstam. What's up with the kid? Mikael? Mikael's my son. His son? What, what a joke. Everyone is lying to you. And then what's up with all the interesting history? Spying on no, me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. <laughs> Him being there with his son, it was not a coincidence. It's difficult to see, but he was worried about you. And also interested in the Feld building. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. You aren't, you're the man of sunglasses at all. You're not even born. Guilty as charged. <laughs> I heard you'd lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. 
After I had suspe suspected something was off. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? I didn't face? recognize your face. We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. Judging by the familiarity you feel toward him, two years minimum? Or maybe a short but close stint on the task force? How do you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Hey, first of all, I didn't. I saved his establishment, he still betrayed Strange. us. Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look saved at it all. Is. There was a giant I.O. graffito in front of the building. It was on fire. Yeah, I lit him fairy with poetic gesture. I knew it. <laughs> didn't I tell you, Trump? I told you it was our shit, kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl child communism, the titular well, returning child character communism. to ghostly apparition of... Good choice, Harry. Don't encourage him, Trump. Okay. What's a shit kid? You. Shit kid, that's you. Maybe you've deserved it. You, you never told me you're not the horse-faced woman. I don't know. My name is not horse-faced woman. It's Judith <laughs> Nima. I was assigned woman. to your unit two months ago. I thought we were friends. We are still friends, I just have a stupid head. Okay. Because you're my commanding officer, I, I really want to respect you. <laughs> I want us to have a normal relationship. That will never happen, Jude. That's true. He's the rudest man on earth. <gasps> He's the reason why the rest of us have to take sensitivity training. And I hate sensitivity training. Duped again. I need to mention, you mentioned task force? Yeah, major crimes unit. Under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicamar. Ring any bells? <sighs> yeah, totally. I get it. Major crime unit. He doesn't remember. <laughs> See? He really doesn't remember. It wasn't a sick joke. At least that's good. Yeah, that's very good. Where have been all the time? There's no mer There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Wait, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? All will burn. Sally officers, Victor, no mistake about it. Why didn't you detect? Why did you leave literal police god? Yeah, why would you leave a literal police god? You were crying hysterically. <laughs> you were drunk, breaking things, being emotionally abusive. You said we were going into the abyss. We are. None of us wanted to see the abyss. So we fucked off. <sighs> Like you told us to. Uh, no, this rings the ambulance. bells aren't ringing because you are brain damaged. That's Detective true. Detective God. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money. Isola, Pell, and so on. That's true. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and... Why not socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? Anomaly in the church. It's this one, number six. Psychotraumatic amnesia, Trant. I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? What? I keep my shit together. Well, good for also, you. I know a person can't wipe their own mind, however traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. 
The other when we looked into that mural. The two cases in your ledger. Yeah, I read the those. unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approach as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Wait, what, what Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world tape, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. <laughs> I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I oh. misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability <laughs> pension? Body! What now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we okay. discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? <clears throat> Uh, I drove in the ocean when I was drunk. Ah, oh, so refreshing. I'll let you know. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. I'm just letting you know. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I got my badge right here, buddy. In a buddy. rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, <laughs> and the badge slips out of your hand. Uh. Hey, my dog. This is my badge. <laughs> Not today, badge. Behold my badge. And your gun. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. My gun's right here. <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Doesn't even matter if I found my gun. I, I'm not drunk. I haven't started drinking again. So you forgot to drink? I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then? He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. Yeah, it's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry I smell bad. None of this matters. My odor situation is mean less compared to what I've discovered. What you discovered? You let the suspect escape, a certain Clasier, because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagi's. We know. Clasier, she was some kind of spy from the Occident Special Train. Oh, well, if she was specially trained, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah. Ruby something, or the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peony now. I'm not doing peony. I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote compared to the nine people who were gunned down. Okay. The streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his own life. He was shot, not once, but twice. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. Oh, okay. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. It, okay. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? 
On the case On lieutenant Euphrétor du bois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing, also losing the badge. <laughs> That's all true. It's all Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the superstardom. <laughs> he likes to, from time to time, allude to being a superstar law official. At first I thought it was a joke, but now I'm not so sure. He says disco about 20 times a day. Don't talk about me. It's just strange, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true <laughs> moralist. moralist. A man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable, but also at odds <laughs> with his behavior. Other still, he is also a Mazovian socio-economist who believes in liquidating the ruling class. How he reconciles these two points of view, I do not know. But he is vocal on both of them. Shut up! Stop And it. then there's the motor carriage in the sea. Something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. And he solved it, near perfectly. In one week we have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator. Locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Sickening. I'm sickening. A new species? Hey, your brother! A colossal stick insect. insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. I'm a fucking superstar cop. What I can I say? I'm pretty fucking sick. Like, what do you guys don't understand about that? I'm not bragging. It's just true. <laughs> you hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, I just have it's this about three on. meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Boom shock a lock of Fucking hell is there. <laughs> is this somehow connected to the case? <laughs> Detective? Uh, yes, I believe the pheromone it emits may be responsible for the killer's mental de The old man <laughs> was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. <laughs> I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. I'm sickening, I know. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. <laughs> this is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. <clears throat> I also started a nightclub in the church. What was that? <laughs> It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. <laughs> yeah, I discovered a heroic, unexplored economic phenomenon in there too. Two millimeter hole in the world. That's great. Entrepreneur is a great new career for you. After police officer. I don't care. Go live in the pale. Four kids were living in a tent on the ice. I'm just saying. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned. So he put them in there. It's okay. It's not that okay. Get off this subject now. Also, the phasma was female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior, too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. 
It had gathered items in its nest. A helmet and a scope. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. I mean, it's... They are for attracting mates. I still think it was female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. It sounded I like I didn't see it. It must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. I think it reproduces parathogenesis. Yeah, parathogenesis. It said it makes copies of itself. As in cloning itself? Yeah. <laughs> what makes you think so? I told me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the pathogenetic mutation. That makes sense. Yes. I have more Very logic than all of you, guys. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. In his mind, he's already planning a nature reserve and knows a good guy for that. I think it emits a chemical that makes it look even more like hmm. reeds. Yes. That would be a chiromone. A pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not a human's, of course. But perhaps a predator's? Nothing is off the table. But uh, I want to stress this. The find does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable, without any chiromones. Of course, Lieutenant. Of course. We should treat the case and the Vasmid as completely separate from each other. People are not going to... What, like that I found a big stick man? They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulatory. It had mandibles that looked like hair and it was completely white on the yes, inside. Yes, but also red colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is Not exceptional. Not the PR. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the Insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it? You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead? Or no? No. The killer. We have a strong motive for him. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. Yeah. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. Okay. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lilian, his Lilian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He killed her in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fixation, aggravated possibly by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Way, way more. Uh, this is my, this, it's my masterpiece. They'll teach us in cops. Masterpiece? Get over yourself, no! Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? I haven't drank. It is there. Like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. 
The previous head of the Dubrage Union was assassinated by our This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open. Okay. In Martinez, where Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears everywhere. True. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Everhart would be big. I would prefer not to partake in anything Union-related, for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. Oh, there's also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person Yes, found. yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How do you know I found the him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Yeah, still, cool, cool. good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. I also looked into the mystery of the Doom commercial area. I don't know what the Doom commercial area is. Rue de Saint-Gonchins, commercial building where all the business go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. Why not? There was a fridge we needed and a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. It was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Dodge the bullet there. Woo! For a moment it seemed like you were just wasting time. So what do you say? You want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to, no. but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to. Jude. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Let's now, go. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go. About the who man I am. looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... Before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... That, was... that does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The question of fall and sports where I've Your love of mass. retro style dance music. How you're able to perform a 360 degree spin kick? Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. Oh God, contact of course. Mike. Contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. Is praise the most inspiring basic sporting principle of the opening competition in 5,000 Where was that? Was Jim? Why did I join? The okay. Oh, you don't that say. Way. Does he also vault an impassable gulf of finance and privilege? It is. It is getting cold out. Shut up. Why did I join the RC? The regular. Then? You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You. Every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She. Leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries. And incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. When was this? When was I a gym In teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. Yes, you told Jim in cool. I believe that's the term. Tell Jim at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. What the, the fuck? The worn floorboards. Kuro is just east of Jamrock. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvy. His smirk suggests uh. clearly contained laughter. Okay, I, see I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. Am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because a sex suspect seemed to think. You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Larry. <laughs> no mob boss would take you. I assure you, 
I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. Some chick who? Dora something. Dora England. Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. So we weren't even married? No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it? What the hell is wrong with you? Six years? Yeah. Or seven? You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Figures. No, I mean, what did she do? She was incredibly fuckable. Oh my god. A beautiful bourgeois woman. Way fierce. Like a Welkin, basically. Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. Shut up. I think she taught in the Academy des Arts, east of the river. Way yeast. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees order. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. What kind of pre. what kind of station is it? Us? With the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys. No one likes us. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You're just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. We recently shirt up a church by chance? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. Why would we go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me. Things are shaky as it is. They are damn iconic though. Torson and McLean. An, an iconic duo, I take it. Yeah, not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. And the sea wing is... God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. There's also a lot of outside help involved. Not only me. Other losers too. And Price is... Ptolemy Price? He's the son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee. It's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. So I work in the bloody murder station. Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there, hard, every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershall. Faubourg, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you. And it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. The Phasmid. I need to tell Lena about it. Who is Lena? 
She lives at 1113 Tabernacle right? Road in Jamrock. Remember? It's Cryptozoa. She lives in Jamrock and Terra Road. She told us about the fast Tabernacle? Myth. It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. She and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. Watch out, or she'll faint. What will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the and most detailed report me? anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective. We just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. Right. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41 with Talk me. to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, come with us. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Would fit him. I'm crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one. I'm with but us. he's at a loss. Flattered? You're yet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. And we also My have a huge dog. piece load, look, no. My Piles dog. that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. Recruit Kim! Detective Kim Kitaragi. I got the achievement because that's my dog. He's really considering it. Okay, I'm ready. Good. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the afternoon sky, the great district hums. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the snow-swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de Saint-Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstan? No. Vicmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottlieb looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomley Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in the office, and the mm. curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minot? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Do we just beat the game? I'm about to cry. Oh, uh, yes. My partner's helping me walk. the game I'll let um I'm gonna save my thoughts here and let the video end on the credits I really enjoyed this game 
It's so fucking crazy. This game is so, like, it's just kind of insane. It has so many choices you can do. There's so many things that we could have done that we haven't done, which means it has such, like, more playability, which is always awesome. I love Harry. It's a great story, and it's very weird. The people who made this story put a lot of work into this with all the lore that you can get in this game. That's crazy. They had to build an entire world, like a fantasy book, and I love fantasy, so, like, I love fantasy novels, so that really was up my alley. I fucking loved this game. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it, and I will see you in the next video. Remember to watch the credits, because that's important. Shout out to all the people who made this.